Hey guys, Jesse Khan here, back from Luxury Gaming, and uh, I just won the UUDS, the Undisputed Ultimate Duel Series Tournament, uh, a 16-man event where all the UDS champions competed, so uh, world-esque in a way, and I won it with Snake Eye Pirate King, so I'm going to show you guys the deck list. Yep. So, uh, honestly, this deck is pretty standard, very OCG-inspired, but I think a lot of people were straying away from that, so I'll still explain a bit. Uh, I considered one popular, but honestly, drawing is fine. This deck does brick sometimes. Um, you don't like instantly lose though if you can't search this off this. Um, but I actually didn't mind playing two either because drawing it again is not the end of the world. And if you don't see a way to play, your deck just does kind of suck, um, which happened quite a bit, but it's fine. Um, everything else, I mean, it's just standard. I think you need to play Oak for draw lines and extra bodies. Oak's just good. Using combos as well. The Fire King cards. Uh, I'm playing two Kirin. Uh, this is because I'm playing cross on the deck, uh, so you want a lot of ways to play through Emperor and Valor because that's a big choke on your first few plays. Um, a lot of the games I'd lost in testing were Emperor and Valor on like the beginning play, and you just can't do anything. Uh, it gets to happen in the finals as well, where I play versus Juan, and I Emperor him in the finals game three, and or I Valor him. And yeah, you just can't do anything, so that's the exact same here. But because I'm playing the crossouts. Uh, I felt like the Kieran on top of that would be excessive. I uh, can contribute some clocky hands. And I felt like it's also really bad when I'm just hand-trapping him a bunch. So going second, it's, it's just not that good. Uh, in fact, I decided to went out going second a lot. Um, and in grind games, it really never comes up to have three. Like, it's so rare. It's, yeah. Uh, and then the spells. I do side other spells, but for now, this is it. Uh, the fire King cards are very powerful. But... I mean, honestly, the, the amount of power you get from just this is plenty. You don't want, you, you don't need more than that, uh, unless you need them for specific utility spots. At which point, like they may be for only matchups, and hence relegated to the side deck. Uh, next up is the Snake Eye or the Simple Spell package. Um, a lot of people have been adding in more witches, but I kept with the OCG tradition of just playing one. And the reason I did that is when I ran the math on it, in terms of adding more stars to the deck, if you play two more Diabell stars. Um, you're, and you're adding more cards to the deck and kind of manipulating it that way, you're only really adding around 2% more chance of starting. And then what it does help with, though, is it lets you play through Valor and Imperm more on the on your first Snake Eye Ash. Um, however, I felt like I could rather add crossouts in those spots, and that kind of just made the deck flow a little more fluidly, uh, and also reduce the redundancy of drawing multiple wanted or whatever. Um, and that's kind of how the deck's direction ended up going. So yeah, that's why I just ended up being one Dibel Star and not three. Uh, and there is a huge difference in quality between Wanted and Dibel Star for sure when you when you draw them. Uh, I mean, that, that's the engine, right? Everything else it should be non-engine. Uh, I guess the only other engine cards are the three bonfires uh, and then one for one. I just want some more ways to start playing uh, and a card that also played through Imperfect again. So it's the same thing. Um, obviously, it's costly, but I think I drew it twice on stream and it was the card that saved me both times. Uh, one Talents. I told you to play Crossout, so just for that, uh, and it means fine to draw. Uh, the game's also doing a bricking where I get impermed and I have like two of these in my hand. One is still not the best, but uh, you know, the games where you have like multiple plus like Flame Burge or whatever, it just sucks. Uh, at least hand traps, you can try to stay alive and top deck out of it. Talents, you're just dead. Um, and then, yeah, so if I haven't made it obvious, the, the strategy here was hand trap the opponents out of playing on like the board weak enough you could play through it. Um, and then cross out to force my plays through. And that's how the non-engine lines up, right? It's just 15 hand traps. It's all the best ones. And I think Droll is probably one of the weaker ones. It, it, it can be insane. It cannot be. Nibiru can, is it kind of similar? Sometimes it doesn't do anything, but most of the time it's really good. Going first, these are also just nuts. And going first is not as easy as it looks. A lot of the times going first, you still lose. It's very easy to get stopped or your board broken still. So uh, you can't just assume you're going to win going first. You need to be prepared. Uh, these have a high chance of ending your opponent's turn, but also pair very well, I think. Ash uh, can be a bit weird because of Hida existing. Uh, it does make that an easier line from the playthrough stuff, but ultimately pairing it's pretty good. Um, a lot of these hand traps kind of suck if you have just one. Uh, Emperor and Vela are the only ones that can kind of carry by themselves. But that's why you want to play so many to pair them together, and then post side, I played more. Uh, and then again, I just want to play through hand traps, so cross out. Uh, and then you can also use it as a trap card if they're playing board breakers, so. It's 42. Uh, I don't I don't want to play 42. I'd like to play 40, but it's the only way I could get me... I get myself happy with the ratios in terms of non-engine to engine, while still having as many of the cards I wanted. Like, I couldn't cut another Kieran. Uh, I couldn't play any less Fire King cards, just make high cards. It's kind of the lowest I can get it. Uh, I think the only way to cut it would be cutting non-engine. I wanted to keep a high count. 
Uh, and then for the extra deck, you know, the Link Rebo, and the other Link one I played was Anima. Um, so I don't play Selene, um, but I still liked Anima because one, just another Link one to maneuver your bodies and fields can be pretty useful. Uh, converting into a Dark for Dark Charm can be good. And then it just outs random things. For example, it forces a negate out of Appaloosa, playing into a field, which comes up. Um, or when you're playing with Nibiru, you just put, always put the Anima zone. Uh, even if you don't play Anima, that's a good habit because your opponent won't know that. Uh, and then you can Anima the token, you'll throw the body for free. Uh, and then also when you have Zalantis, you choose the zones you're summoning back the monsters to. So you can set up a play where like in round one against Jeff, I put the Kirin under the Anima zone so I could suck up the Kirin. Uh, and it gains the attack point, so it gives you some easy lethal setups through floating monsters like the Kirin. Um, as for Link 2s, we got Masquerina, obviously, SP. I mean, this should all be pretty standard. You could argue a second Hina, but I would never ever need it. Um, the only thing that I guess is not the most standard, I mean, it's standard, but like, uh, it's not literally every single backlist is Phoenix, although I think it should be. Um, there's not many great ways to actually hit through back row that easily in this deck. And forcing out back row with this can be nice. It also helps you clear Island or uh, Divine Temple and like weird grind games are breaking the field and cycling the draw, right? So you can turn your dead cards into now hand traps if you have, if you can't kill them and you're going for a, now you're trying to make a defensive play. Uh, it also matters for some Zalantis OTKs where if they don't have a monster, you go Phoenix Culling with Zalantis, attack with both and then pop this with Zalantis and bring back the Raging Phoenix. Uh, and that's, that's a lethal line. Uh, and you can do that nice because you can make Phoenix into Princess and then revive this back so you, you don't need as many bodies to, to do it as you do with like this on that wall, for example. Um, also, just another generic Fire Link monster you can use with a Nib token, which also matters. Um, I think it's all Link 2s, yeah. Two Princess. So you, I, I played two, partially for follow-up, partially for not being Unicorn. Um, the biggest one was if you get Nibiru on the Summoner Princess, uh, when you have an Arvada in the grave, then you want to have the second one. However, honestly, I don't find myself in that scenario too often, because um, my two one play has been kind of different than that. So... Yeah, I don't know, but like, I don't know how much you need a second princess, but it's that's nice to have. That's one of the flex spots, if anything. Uh, one heat soul. I like this card a lot because you're like 15 hand traps. The draw two actually just broken. Uh, you don't need to keep it on field either. You can just put it in the grave, uh, and then have Amber Whale bring it back. So you get the draw to your turn, and then when it comes back off whale, draw a second card. Uh, it is worse drawing into like a droll in that spot, but other hand traps um, are still good. Um, yeah, very much like that. Uh, and then that's the link four is right, and these are all standard. No access code, no Selene, um, no space for them. And I don't have one dead either, so it come up a lot. It obviously would come up a lot less. Um, I mean, the two like flexible spots it seems are like these. Some people argue this, but I would not. I think this card's mandatory. Not the Kribo, right? Oh, that's not. That's, sorry, that's the wrong card. It's Anima. Um, but yeah, these were these were good. Yeah, no, Kribo is absolutely mandatory. My bad. Karibo is actually one of the most underrated cards in the, in the deck. Um, it's really important for dodging targeting effects from level 1 monsters. It's a lot of the time just putting in the grave before you summon an opponent level 1 like Ponix. Um, if people played greedily and held like the Emperor for Ponix, they could shut you off the Fire King cards. But also at the same time, if opponents plays properly and puts the Karibo in the grave before you get that far, then the Imperm does nothing. So you would never hold the Imperm for that. But yeah, uh, Karibo is just insane for that reason. Uh, as for the side deck, so the strategy was hand traps, which is why uh, the only thing I want in, in the mirror is more hand traps. So I cut down on some of the engine requirements. Uh, like I said, I was saying, train one of the Karens um, and just one of the cross outs to reduce redundancy, which I know is kind of weird, but you kind of have to, and put in the deltas and gamma driver. Um, I never drew gamma, or I drew it when I driver was already banished once, but that's it. Uh, that was in feature against Jeff. Um, I never won because of these cards. I think every time I used them, they were good. But, or except against Cam, Adalta wasn't very good. Um, but they were mostly good, but my hands sucked every time I had them, it feels like. So, um, I just really want another hand trap. Maybe it needs, should, I should retry Bell or Crow, but those are more offensive cards. Like, they're more useful as board breakers than they are hand traps. And the purpose I'm trying to fill here is a hand trap. Um, I don't think Mourner is very good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what that was. Obviously, I drew Driver, and that, that kind of sucked as well. Um... <laughs> best friend dogwood you've, you've seen her before uh the agave dragon same thing uh and then as i said before going first isn't like this thing that's guaranteed to have you win so i wanted something else for going first so i put in three strike um if i felt like there'd be everyone on board breakers i would have gone with anti-spells or some limits probably anti-spell though 
However, I felt like there'd be a lot of people on hand traps, if anything more so than board breakers. So I wanted a bit of a compromise. And with hand traps, if you get into a value war, strike is really good. And then if you're playing Rista deck that does have board breakers or anything else, strike is still decent as like, as, as something to back up a field. In fact, it's, it's better than decent, it's strong. It's like better than any other hand trap by far. Uh, even if it's not as strong as a floodgate, it's it still probably ends the game. Um, but pretty much, yeah, I didn't want to get like Valor and then forced to pass an anti-spell and just lose because if it's a strike, it could definitely keep you in the game way more than um, a flood, uh, something else can. Again, OCG inspired, it's not that original. Uh, and then I cited three utility cards. So keep in mind from this tournament, I expected it'd be all insane players, and the tournament would be almost entirely fire decks. Uh, what ended up being was seven fire kings, six snake eyes, one cash tier, one foundries, one branded. Um, so that's roughly where I expected. I thought maybe there'd be a voiceless, maybe a race somewhere in there, but uh, I expected very little of these rogue decks. So I didn't play lightning storms or duster or any back removal like that. The only things I'd want were like answers to gimmick cards. Uh, like Vanity Fiend and the Defesher are both stuff that happened to me, and that's why I play Skyburn and Subversion. Um, I think specifically Subversion is really cool for Cash Tier, just giving them a search target, um, help break through fields. And Skyburn's pretty solid too, just uh, at random stuff, but both these cards came up. Um, my Cash Tier opponent was not happy when I he had Vanity Fiend and Defesher, and I just did, all right, pop the Defesher, push back the thing, and then dead. <laughs> uh, that was very, very much not happy for him. Uh, and then I'm signing Divine Temple. Honestly, I'm not super familiar with the combos with this card, which is probably a reason maybe I, should, I didn't main it. Uh, I, I think you need either Doolittle Chimera or Selene, though, for it to actually be a strong card for winning first. The reason I played it was when you get Dimension Shifted, in the draw phase, they play around talents. You ask for Poplar, you add the Temple. Uh, you make IP, and this puts Oak in the small trap card zone. And then when they summon a monster, Oak gets back Ash, which gets Poplar, which gets you... Um, it's fall, a sinful spell for next turn, and then you have four monsters in the field where you can make SP with bodies up or Apo for four. Uh, Apo for four versus like flu is pretty good. Um, so that that's the logic behind it. And then going second into decks is summon a lot in your turn. So I feel like Snake Eye did that. Then I could just side it in and it'd be fine. Another stretch target as well, uh, in case I was drawing like a poplar plus one to going second. Um, I just thought going first they would contribute to break hands, and that's why I didn't want to main deck it. Uh, and again, because I wasn't preparing really at all for these rogue decks, um, I felt they could commit a lot more to other niche scenarios, more focused towards the fire decks. That's the deck, guys. Um, thank you for watching. Now, take it with a grain of salt what I have here because it was built for a different environment than a normal tournament. Uh, try to take the concepts forward uh, and adapt them to whatever tournament play style or setting you're going you're gonna to have. And yeah, that's all.